question for Shifu. Um, once again, for the record, how are the different movements of the 14 movements in the Jinjin Gong tradition related to the meridians and perhaps certain kind of illnesses? Um, Jinjian早上学到的也包括还没有学到的动作 总的来说的话这个不是固定的它又配上夜火气换物就是这个问题就是一个第一个受三阳经它这些病来说的话就是对上肢对肩啊颈啊背啊这些病对这些病啊都有好处等于我就把这个大体的哎所以不能把全部大讲完啊这是这样 um, The answer was that the important thing in, in, in Taoist or ancient Chinese thought is not to dissect it too much. He said there is, and I'm adding that particular part, is that there are some modern forms of Qigong that are really suited for modern Western thinking or modern Chinese thinking, which is you do this movement, you open this particular meridian. But it's really the idea of true Taoist movement is to have one thing that treats everything. And so there is sort of, um, you could theoretically take each movement and say this treats this organ and that organ and this organ, but the whole idea is to take something that's simple, for instance, the idea of the tendon. The minute you stretch the tendon, you generate yang, you generate heat. The energy rises to the head. You know? So if you just that short movement at the end of the pushing of the mountain, that little movement or that little movement at the end of the stretching is you generate spring energy. The energy rises up. 
the yang qi. And so you have a lot of these kind of tendon stretching movements at the beginning of the 14, because if you practice that in the mor morning, the first job is you want to wake up. You want to make the blood pressure rise to your head. You want to uh, get clearness. And so um, the characteristic of Taoism is not to be too analytical about each movement. But he says when, what he does like to do is to say, for this kind of disease or so, this would be a good movement. Like the first, uh, the 14 coming groups, and the first group is the first four movements. So it's 12 movements divided by four, you get three different groups. So the first group is, of course, you leave away the, uh, the first shaking and the first stance, but then you've got the next four movements, which is the Weito Shansu, the Weito, the temple garden, guardian presenting the stick, Arlang Danshan, Arlang holding up the mountains, Shuangshou, um, Tuoriyu, holding up the sun and the moon with both hands, and the Jai Xing Huanto, plucking the stars, uh, changing the dipper. All of those are tending, stretching, and you move your hands a lot. And as a result of it, you open up the three yin and the three yang meridians on your arms. So heart disease, lung disease, shoulder disease, neck disease, head disease. For those types of diseases particularly suitable. So that's a good question. So the question is, are there any contraindications for practicing certain movements in Qigong, like stones or prolapse? or thrombosis, uh, for instance, with the shaking. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good question. Very practical question, very important. You know, one example is, of course, in uh, pregnancy and uh, menstruation. Uh, there is uh, another colleague of mine, and I'm adding this, who insists that, for instance, if you have menstrual cramping, actually things like breathing into the abdomen, shaking, etc., will break through the barrier, and while it'll hurt more for a while, in the end it goes away very quickly. However, he says, and that is definitely correct, um, is if you practice Qigong on your first or second day of your period, and then the next day it's more intense than it normally is, you should take it easy. You know, for some people, it's particularly good to practice uh, Jin Qigong, including reverse breathing, when you have your period. That's mostly for excess conditions like stagnation. But if there is, for some reason, you bring all of this energy, because this is what it will do, it bring your energy more than any other time into your uterus, into your lower dantian. Uh, and that is not the problem to begin with. Then at a time when the energy is already there during menstruation, then you've got an excess of energy there and you start bleeding and not stopping for a long time. Then you need to be careful during and either practice very lightly or even rest a day or two and, and not practice anything at all during that time. So, uh,
朋友来了以后就是，第二天你要停，第三天也停，第四天可以开始练，这样还有好处。So if you're not quite sure, if you tell it something to your patients where you're not sure how they react particularly to a more serious workout, the instruction would be the second and the third day of the period you shouldn't practice. The first and the fourth day is okay, but not the second and the third where usually most of the blood comes out.